The cinema opens in 1845 through the point of view of a young woman. She is being hung from a tree and is having a mask nailed to her face before the townsfolk light her on fire and speak a chant while holding a doll to the woman's face. Her burned corpse is left hanging from the tree hours later. Present day, in the town of Banfield, Massachusetts, disgraced journalist Jerry Fenn gets a news of somewhat happening nearby. He drives to investigate because a farmer thinks that his cow has been marked by a cult, but Jerry catches that it was just the man's son painting the Metallica M. Jerry then listens something that beckons him to a nearby tree, where he finds a burnt doll like the one seen in the beginning of the movie, and with the date of February 31, 1845 inscribed on it. Jerry then steps on the doll's head and breaks it. On his way out of town that night, Jerry drives out of town and move away off the road when he sees a young woman, Alice Paget, in the middle of the road. She approaches the same tree that Jerry went to earlier and whispers something before passing out. Jerry takes her to the home of Father William Hagen, who is Alice's uncle. He calls Dr. Natalie Gates, and it is naked that Alice is deaf-mute, which means it would have been unbearable for Jerry to hear her talk. Natalie accuses Jerry of trying to harm Alice. Jerry stays around Banfield to possibly get a story for his employers with a religious angle to it. He drives to church where Hagen preaches, and during the sermon, Alice stands up after staring at a statue of the Virgin Mary and starts walking out. The people follow her and watch as she goes to the tree. After standing there for a moment, Alice speaks again, amazing everyone. She claims she is hearing the voice of Mary herself, who is requesting through Alice that everybody return to the tree the next day. While Natalie runs tests on Alice, Jerry reports to his former employer, Monica Slade. She recaps Jerry that he was terminated for faking a story, and she doesn't want to hear what he has to say. Jerry later has a dream of a ghostly woman rising from a nearby creek and crawling out. The next day, the residents return to the tree to see if another miracle can be performed. Alice walking out from the church, and she goes to the tree. The people follow her. After standing there for a moment, a young paraplegic boy, Toby Walsh, is brought forward. Alice speaks for Mary and tells Toby to walk. To the surprise of everyone, the boy is able to do so. Jerry records the event. Everyone starts to pray to Mary. Inside the church, the statue of the Virgin Mary appears to cry blood. Jerry come across Bishop Giles, who is working with Monsignor Delgard, sent by the Vatican to investigate whether or not Alice truly did perform a divine miracle. Alice herself becomes a media sensation, and the tree is set to become a shrine. Hagen walks to the tree and grasps the doll on the ground, all while a ghostly apparition appears to shoot him. Jerry make arrangement for an interview with Alice, where she says that Mary said her that Jerry misses the power he used to have with his words, and that she saw someone in need of her help. While, Hagen comes to talk to Jerry in private, and he starts coughing heavily due to his emphysema. He comes to tell Jerry not to take advantage of Alice and exploit her for personal gains. Next we see, Alice practices singing in at the church with Hagen. Jerry sits with Delgard debates about her miracle. While, he starts to have a violent coughing where he collapses. As Jerry calls for an ambulance, Alice places her hand on Hagen's chest, and he suddenly finds himself breathing usually again. Natalie later does an x-ray for Hagen and compares it to one from a while back where his condition looked far more severe. Now believing that Alice truly healed Hagen's condition, the tree is officially declared a shrine, and Banfield starts to gain more tourism. Jerry later talks to Natalie about the doll, where she says him that those particular dolls are meant to be good luck but are also known for tricking evil things, putting the impossible date February 31st to keep them inside forever. They then walk by the same creek he saw in his dream, and he once again sees the apparition. When he tells Natalie he wants to see Hagen, we see Hagen is smoking a cigarette and finds a book about Mary's evil history. He goes to the church for the confessional where he hears the outward voice of Mary condemning him because she healed him and he repaid her with doubt over the miracle. Hagen steps out and is confronted by Mary's ghost, who attacks him. When Jerry goes to the church, he finds Hagen hung by the neck in an apparent suicide. After the medics take his body out, Jerry speaks to Giles, who asks him to keep quiet on the notion that a man of the cloth took his own life. Jerry interviews Alice again, and after reviewing the footage later that night, he slows down the footage to reveal something hidden, Mary's ghost briefly flashing. During Hagen's funeral, Jerry and Natalie look in the church's basement where they discover some books in Latin about demons and witches. They find a written piece on Mary Elnor, who was a healer in her time, but anybody who doubted her would meet a grim fate. The residents turned on Mary, who confessed to working for Satan. She had the mask of the Virgin Mary nailed to her face and was burnt to death while trapping her spirit in the doll that Jerry broke. Alice stands up during the service and says the people that Mary desires them to gather at the shrine for a special service. Jerry and Natalie are then found and attacked by Mary's ghost, but they escape the church and head off to warn Alice. Jerry and Natalie go to the Archdiocese of Boston to Giles and Delgard to show them Hagen's findings on Mary. But while Giles knew about this, Delgard notes he was never told about it, and Giles
Miles doesn't want anything to stop the service. Jerry later does more research on Mary and studies that before she died, she had a child that was adopted by a man named Nicholas Paget, which means Alice is Mary's descendant, and Mary made a deal with the devil to live on through her children and their children and so on. Jerry is attacked by Mary's ghost again, but Delgard wards her off, now convinced of what Jerry was talking about. As Giles gets the shrine service in order, Delgard joins Jerry and Natalie in going to the church to bless the doll and effort to return Mary's soul into the doll. When Delgard lights it on fire, the flames spread up to the large cross on the wall, which falls off and spikes Delgard, setting him on fire as well. Jerry and Natalie run out and head over to the service. The service is well underway, with Mary set to take in all the townspeople's faith to become more powerful. Jerry and Natalie get there and understand that the only way to stop Mary is to get everyone in turnout to doubt her power. Jerry tells the crowd that he faked the whole thing and that Alice is not really a healer. He tells some facts about what happened with her being able to hear and Toby walking, but claims those are just medical effects. With Natalie joining in, the crowd starts to jeer and refuse their fate. Mary is pissed and begins to set the tree on fire. The people run out just as her ghost appears and tries to attack. Toby loses control of his legs again, and Natalie carries him out to safety. Giles attempts to calm the spirit, but Mary places her hand against his chest and disintegrates him. When she goes after Jerry, Alice stands in the way and takes the hit. With Mary having killed her last descendant, her spirit can no longer live on, and she shouts as she fades into oblivion. Jerry holds Alice's body and tearfully prays to God for her survival. She then wakes up and Jerry hugs her. Jerry and Natalie go with Alice to Hagen's grave to honor him. Even though Alice is once again deaf-mute, Jerry finds a way to communicate with her. He tells Natalie that he is shocked that Alice survived since she had no pulse and wasn't breathing when he held her, but Natalie considers maybe God really did work a miracle. After they leave, we see a verse from Matthew chapter 7 verse 15, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. End of this movie, the statue of the Virgin Mary crying blood again. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe our channel for more videos and movies. Hit like and share your comments.